Welcome. Today we're going to continue looking at RSS clients for iPadOS and macOS. I'm not actually going to show you the macOS version uh, of Reader today because it is so similar to the iPadOS version that it's essentially the same app. app? It's just on a different platform, so we're not going to bother with it at all. So let's jump into Reader, see where it's, where it's good, where it's not good, and why I might recommend it to you or may not. Buckle up. So what we're looking at right now is Reader on iPadOS. And it is, and it's good, right? It's got good trackpad support. Doesn't have two finger swipe, right? I can try to swipe with my fingers, nothing's happening two finger, but if I think if I swipe I can star and I can mark as red. I don't actually wanna do any of those things. It's got good keyboard commands as well. Hold the command key and I got a bunch that come up, right? I'm not even gonna go through them all. All right, I can also, this is a, Adventure Journal doesn't send out full feed, but I can bring in the full feed by pressing this little button down here. Readability. That's good. It takes a little bit. Um, there you go. Now I get a video and I get a full feed. Great. Uh, another, let's find a text heavy article. That would be it, probably. Another interesting thing it does is bionic reading, which does this to it. So what is this supposed to do? It is supposed to, there's a longer um, explanation of this in the written version uh, today. But what this is supposed to do is technically you fixate on words. So you look at a chunk of it and you look at the next chunk. And this is supposed to increase the amount you fixate and decrease the amount you saccade. So saccade is switching between the fixations. That's what it's supposed to do. I just find it annoying. I don't know. There's like a big explanation. I read it and I was like, okay, great. And this is based on any science. And I was like, uh, maybe I don't like it. So <laughs> I don't actually use it, but it's got bionic reading. If you find it to like, if you find that it helps you read faster, comprehend better, by all means use it. I just don't like it. I'm going to turn off that because I don't like it. Um, I like that you can do stuff like M single key instead of like command M on read on unread two um, to get to the end. I don't love, let's see if I can really do it here. All right, get to the end of an article. So it did okay there. I often have found that I get to the end of an article and I press space and I didn't really realize it was at the end of an article and I'm into the next article. I don't, I don't like that. And this goes for Mac and uh, Mac OS, iPad OS, pretty much the same thing. Shift is really fast with R, or Shift Sync is really fast with just R. I do like that it automatically wipes the articles out for you, the ones that you've already read. I do occasionally find though that, uh, especially in, so view, it doesn't have, I wish I had command comma, maybe that's just a Mac holdover thing, but command comma would be great. In uh, compact, we got a good amount of settings here. I like, again, lots of settings if you want them, but you can go preferred layout if you go to compact. Let me get out and then we look at my unread. It goes into every single article. Right, and so if I want to actually read these, see again, back in the article, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, I haven't found a good way in this to be able to just like go through the list of articles that I have and and then just go through them because I sell them I don't want to read. Um, regular is uh, the best thing I found. That's I, I leave it on regular. It's only okay. <laughs> that's that's it. As far as accounts, it's got a ton of support. It's got uh, local RSS. It's got read later with will sync with Safari. This is like Safari, iPad OS, uh, Mac OS, iOS, read later service. It goes pocket and Instapaper. And it's got like a ton of other feed bin, feedly, feed wrangler, feed HQ, news blur, the old reader, yada, yada, yada. And then it's got a bunch of self-hosted things too. Fever and reader, uh, self-hosted Google reader API. It's got like a lot of options here. And then the same on every platform, unlike Unread, which, or uh, sorry, unlike Net Newswire, which has got more options on iPadOS than it does in other things. Um, gestures, it's got, but it doesn't actually like work with your trackpad. So overall, what do I say about Reader for Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS? I like the iPhone client, actually. I think that's the best one. The iPhone client works like I expect it to work. The iPad client, I just can't quite get it to work like I want. The same with the Mac client. It just doesn't, I was like, no, that's not what I wanted, right? If I change it to not mark everything as red as soon as I look at the article, then I've got to mark everything as red. And I don't want that either. Um, 
and I can't just scroll through a list. I haven't been able to find a good setting where I can just scroll through the list and be like, Mark is red, Mark is unread, because I don't want to read some. And then I'll go, look, okay, now what? Here's the thing I really want to read. And then I kind of refine and, and dig down a little bit more. And I might even mark some more as things I don't want to read. And it just doesn't do that well for me. What I do love, though, again, keyboard shortcuts are stellar on iPadOS and macOS, and they're the same, which is like wonderful. Stuff like Spark email is like, M on one and shift or command M on one and shift command M on it. Like it's just stupid. Keep your keyboard shortcuts the same, even if they have to be weird, just keep them the same. Uh, and reader does a great job of that. It, the iPhone client is excellent. The iPad client is good. Uh, it's nice that it syncs with so many services and that has feature parity with syncing services on both platforms. I like that. And the sync is fast. Bionic reading may or may not help you. I think it's, I never use it. It's, I think it's dumb. It looks terrible, but it may or may not help you. Um, so if you like it, great. I think if you're going to use a read it later service like Instapaper or read it later, or um, I don't even know what they all are. Instapaper pocket or read later through iCloud. I think if you're going to use one of those and you want one single reading interface to go to everything, then it's a, stellar option. It can be a really good option. It's the only option that I'm aware of so far um, in my kind of look at RSS clients again that does that. Uh, but that's it. I mean, it's not going to take my preferred RSS client away from Unread 2. I I just like it more. I think it's prettier. I think that I think it's easier to read. I like the design a lot more. I functions how I feel like things should function. It just fits my workflow better. For all that said, though, uh, Reader is not subscription. This is technically Reader 4. Not subscription. It is a one-time purchase. Uh, one-time purchase on iPad and iOS, and then a second purchase for macOS, I believe. And it just works. It's a solid client. Nothing really like, no reason for me to tell you, just never use it. But no reason for me to tell you, like, it's the standout, unless, unless you like the read it later stuff. That's it. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up. If you loved it, you can subscribe, hit the bell so that YouTube lets you know when new videos come out, but make sure your notifications are off because you've got better things to do than just get notifications all the time. You should like work or do something, hang out with your kids, read a book. And if you really loved it and you wanna keep seeing more videos, make sure that more come, then you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel, or for as little as five bucks, I will give you a virtual high five. And there'll be some extra videos talking about new apps I'm looking at, new books I'm looking at, just new thoughts where you can actually ask me some questions and, and see what I'm up to. Have a wonderful day.